No nonsense gin drinking. All gin, no nonsense. G'day gin lovers, welcome back. I'm Bobby Freeman, and as you can tell by the return of the Australian accent, we have an Australian gin on the show for you. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen? Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Archie Rose Gin. Now straight away, I, I'm afraid I have to make a little bit of an apology here because my good old mate Craig Stowers, who is actually the original patron, the very first person to sign up and support this show, he sent me a consignment of Australian gins about, I don't know, about a year ago now. And for some reason, I lost this one. I forgot about it. It got sort of lost in the back of my cupboard. So um, I'm extremely sorry about that, Craig. But we're going to rectify this uh, better late than never. And we're going to try it for you and everybody else today. So then, let's find out what they say about it on the website, shall we? And of course, I shall be bringing out the Australian accent. And I do have the Australian hat as well. So. It's been done a few times now. Is it becoming a little bit commonplace or is it expected of me? Should I do it anyway? Hmm. I, if I, you know what? I'm going to try a little special effect here. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'll give it a go anyway. Ah, got me right in the eye. <laughs> yep, as I thought that was a disaster, I'm just going to put it on manually. So here we go, my friends. Australian gin with the Australian hat. Our signature dry gin is a contemporary Australian take on the classic dry gin, featuring 14 traditional and native botanicals, each individually distilled in our copper pot still, featuring blood like, well, now get a load of these botanicals. Honestly, I, I mean, I believe this is what's called bush food in Australia. So they've started off with blood lime, ethically sourced river mint, fresh lemon myrtle. Ah, oh, the lemon myrtle. That is the one I was hoping for because I don't know. I mean, it, it seems to be only available in Australia, but whenever they put lemon myrtle in a gin, it is always spectacular. So I'm glad to see that one in there. What else have they got? They've got hand foraged Dorigo pepper leaf. Now, Dorigo, that is a word that could only be Australian, isn't it? Struth, mate, look at the size of the Dorigo on that fella. So then, that's, I mean, oh, it's, it's amazing when you sort of see a gin and read the botanicals and you just think, you know what, most of those things, I've not got a clue what they are, but they sound amazing. That blood lime, I'd never heard of a blood lime before, but I looked it up, it's literally what you think. It's a lime that's kind of red in colour and apparently it's a lot sweeter. The river mint is, well, I guess just mint, but it grows by a riverbed. What else? The lemon myrtle is that nice uh, sort of, well, I'm, it's some sort of flower or leaf or something, but it's described as even more lemony than lemon. So my friends, I look, there's just so much going on in here. I think we've talked about it quite enough. Let's get the top off and find out what the damn thing's like, shall we? And indeed, it has a cork, so we know what that means. It's the Australian cork test, mate. The Australian cork test, mate. So does it have a squeak? A tiny little whimpering squeak, like a little frightened animal. Not too bad. Let's get the top off, shall we? Here we go. Oh, best court test we've had in a while, I think. Not bad. Kind, kind of sort of deep and booming. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It's just a bit of fun. So let's get a sniff of it. Now, Australian gins, in my experience, have always been absolutely exquisite to sniff. So let's get the old snitcher in here, shall we? Here we go. Trying to get the cork in there. Oh. <laughs> and it does not disappoint. The Australian gins have set this bar, the, the nasal bar, very, very high. I, did, I, I spat a bit on the floor down there. I hope you didn't notice. And this one is no exception. It, oh, it's kind of just thick and heavy and sort of set through with that, that beautiful sort of lemony, more than lemoniness that the lemon myrtle gives it. It's massively citrus which I would guess is coming from both the lemon myrtle and of course that sweet blood lime. Is there, now what it did, it said there's mint in there. There is a kind of a sort of, you know, that sort of kind of, what's the word to describe it? The sort of the sensation that it would, uh, that, that mint gives you, that slight sort of tickle on the nostrils. There's a slight hint of it in there as well. So I tell you what, my friends, this is gonna be quite something. So then, let's get tonic in and see if I am correct. I'm gonna throw that over there. I'm just gonna, that's, that, there's no point in doing that because I need that again in a minute. <laughs> Never mind, that's my problem, I'll sort it out. Okay, little bit of tonic in there like that. What ABV is it? I think it was about 42 if I'm not mistaken. I am not mistaken, it's 42, about what we expect from gin. So this, I hope, is gonna be very, very good. So my friends, I say to you, what was it called? Archie Rose, wasn't it? I kept calling it Alfie Rose earlier. Archie Rose, uh, um, uh, signature dry gin all the way from Australia, I say cheers. Holy sh... <laughs> oh, 
gin lovers, gin lovers, gin lovers. Oh, how is it? How is it that London is known as the home of gin when every single Australian gin I have tried has been absolutely kind of off the scale, to be honest with you. It's, who's that? Hello? Hello? All oh, right, I'm trying to make a video in here. God damn it. That's Narissa messing around with the bins while I'm trying to make a video. God damn you. Well, I always think you're messing around with the bins. Right? Yes, will you stop interfering with the bins, please? You know, Bye, have a nice day. You don't got that on other YouTube channels, do you? What was I saying? Yeah, how is it London is known as the home of gins when everything in Australia seems to just be quietly and without making a song and a dance about it, just being absolutely stupendous? Let me try and go through the flavours on this one. I would say it's obviously, as I say, massively citrus forward, but in a kind of a sort of a, it's got a cheeky sweetness to it as well, which I, I don't know what that was. That's a cheeky move. It went something like that. It's, 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 it's a bit cheeky. Look, whoa, cheeky, cheeky hand. Which I guess comes from that uh, bloodline because it did say it's citrusy, but with a slightly sort of sweeter hue on it. But as with the other gins, it has this Deep, so it's not just a light dissipating flavour, it's a deep and heavy flavour and it's supremely sort of lemony, which again is going to be coming from that lemon myrtle. I, I would love to, I wish, I don't think we get it in this country, I don't, otherwise someone would have used it. If not, I mean, blimey, I mean, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> it's like it just sizzles in the mouth, sizzles in a sort of a, a beautifully sharp citrus way but wonderfully sort of mixed in with a nice sweetness. Sweet and citrus is great. It's kind of like a, like a sherbet lemon. Do you get those in other countries? It's sort of like a, a, a sort of a lemony sweet with sherbet in the middle. It's kind of, kind of like that. But at the same time, I love this use of mint. It's not very often you get mint in gins. I've got a feeling that I think this Nordes one or Nords, whatever you call it, I think that one had mint in it as well. But I. Mint's obviously a massively strong flavour, you've got to be careful, but they've just sort of put a tiny sprinkle and it just gives it a little bit of a bite as well and makes it so kind of uh, multi-layered and 3D. But at the same time, they've balanced all those flavours because those are quite contrasting flavours. There was one, that Dorigo pepper, pepper leaf, whatever it was. I suppose it is a little bit in there, a little tiny bit. Again, they pulled it back. You can tell they've expertly blended these flavours because those are real contrasting ones as well. But they've kind of tweaked them and tuned them and they're all just sitting in a line, a harmonious line. And that's, that's, oh God, I could drink that all day. But I won't, because I'd be dead. So then, let's try it neat. Personally, I don't think this is going to be a neat one, but... <laughs> Ooh, it's got a bit more of a kick to it as you'd expect a lot more kind of a sort of a it's definitely burning on the tongue a bit longer I reckon you can get a little bit more of the pepperiness maybe that tiny bit more of the mintiness because it's lingering in the same way you would do if you'd eaten like sort of a, a mint sweet or toothpaste or something like that but again that is I think I'm gonna go out of a limb here I don't know I didn't make the gin but I reckon that was made for a gin and tonic so then guys what's it gonna hit what how hard is it gonna hit you in the pocket? Well, Al, Al, Al Freeman, Al Freeman, Al Freeman here is gonna tell you. And because it's from Australia, and I think exclusively available in Australia, we're gonna do it in Australian dollars for my Australian uh, viewers. So this little chap will set you back 79 Australian dollars. And to give you an idea, sort of in other parts of the world, uh, that's about uh, 43 pounds, uh, 50 uh, uh, euros and 61 American dollars. And that is a little bit on the pricey side. It's tipped above my 40 uh, pound mark, which I like to pay for sort of smaller distilleries. But to be honest, in Australia, for some reason, my Aussie friends down under get absolutely screwed on the price of gin. It's always, a lot of my subscribers that contribute to uh, this channel always say how expensive the gin is down there, especially the British gin that gets imported uh, or exported over there. It's crazy. So it is a little bit more money, but unfortunately, it seems to be the way in uh, Australia. But what I would say, it's, it may be expensive, but at least it is absolutely brilliant which uh, which is you know what i expected of an australian gin so guys so guys to sum up yeah it's gonna cost you a little bit of money okay it's a little bit more money that i usually like to pay but 
that is kind of, you know, that sting when you're paying a little bit more, more money is kind of offset when it's truly excellent. And I don't mind it quite so much. And that is most definitely a truly excellent gin. Quite sort of, um, not particularly, we're not gonna jump out, uh, jump out at you on the shelf, is it? It's fairly sort of mundane looking, but very often those are the ones that are the best. So I'm always, always, I've yet to find a bad Australian gin. Maybe it'll happen, I don't know, but so far, my friends down under, I don't know what you are doing to your gin. Well, I've got a fair idea, it's something to do with the lemon myrtle, but whatever you are doing, my friends, keep doing it. And I say to my friends at the Archie Rose Distillery, keep up the bloody good work. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video today, found it useful, informative, enlightening, and liberating um, uh, in any way, shape, or form. If you have, of course, don't forget to subscribe to my show, press the like button on this video, and the bell icon so you get notified, 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 I think I did that in the last video, notified when my new videos come out. And if you wanna support the show, head over to the old Patreon page or press the uh, join button below this video. And of course, I'm very sorry to Craig for taking so long to review the bloody thing. But until next time, guys, you know the drill. Take care, stay safe. Thank you to all my patrons and members and keep drinking the gin.